Vaishali Siddhapa and welcome to my channel. At today's class, we are going to talk about one of the concepts of microeconomics, which is the optimal choice of the consumer. The topic is the optimal choice of the consumer. Before talking about this theory, I just want to brief you a previous view of the topics which is related to optimal choice of the consumer. The two theories, if you want to analyze the optimal choice of the consumer, for that you have to analyze two another two important theories which we already discussed about. The one is the indifference curve, yeah, indifference map. The second theory is budget set. Because the optimal choice of the consumer, the topic which I am going to talk about, that is, uh, both the theories uh, simultaneously we are going to discuss in one particular diagram. So that's why it is called as optimal choice of the consumer. So now the two theories which we are going to talk about, that is indifference curve and the budget set. First of all, let me brief you uh, in the previous classes, a uh, few of the videos. I have already discussed about what is indifference map how exactly it will be in the diagram, how we are going to present it, what is the meaning of it. On the other diagrams in the previous other few classes, we already discussed what is budget set and how we are going to construct the budget set, what is the importance of it, how it is going to be, why it is downward slope, every topics are covered. But still, just for the, you know, uh, quick revise. The indifference curve, the indifference curve says, the first one, higher the indifference curve gives the higher the satisfaction. So you have the x-axis and the y-axis, you have three indifference curves. In the three indifference curve, higher the indifference curve gives you the higher satisfaction. IC1 gives you the lesser satisfaction than the IC3 and IC2. And uh, uh, IC2 gives the highest satisfaction than IC1. But lesser than the IC3. So this way in three IC3 curves a family of indifference curve which will be called as indifference map. In this IC3 in this particular point you are going to get highest satisfaction. Being a consumer you always want to reach IC3 because you think you will be getting you will be achieving maximum satisfaction in this. So you always going to pick IC3 other than choosing IC2 and IC1. So this is indifference curve. So indifference curves are represented in one single diagram more than one uh, indifference curve is represented then it will be called as indifference map. So in this one what it say is uh, we already done with this higher the indifference curve give the higher the satisfaction. The second one says for one good we have to sacrifice the another one. So in the x-axis you have banana and the y axis you have mango. If you want more of banana, you have to sacrifice mango. If you want more of mango, you have to sacrifice banana. So for one good, you always have to sacrifice another good. That is what we are trying to say. For one good, we always have to sacrifice another good. So we have only two goods. That is one of the um, assumptions you can say it as. So we have considered only two goods which is banana and mango. When you are going to buy this, we get three different indifference curve. So as I said, IC3 gives you the highest satisfaction according to this. So make a consumer, which one you are going to pick? IC3 you are going to pick because you are expecting higher satisfaction. What budget set says? We have two goods again. In the X axis banana, Y axis mango. And the consumer income is limited. The consumer, your income is very much limited. At the same time, the two goods which we are talking, the two goods are banana and mango. The two goods what we are going to consider, its prices are very much fixed. Mango price will be fixed, at the same time banana price will be fixed. So these are the two different theories which we are going to, uh, you know, simultaneously we are going to study in the theory of optimal choice of the consumer. So now, let me explain how exactly it is going to work. If you are going to separate this line, can you, this, can you see the straight downward sloping curve exactly like this? Yes? Okay, let me give the name A and B. The curve, what you see, it is AB curve. AB is nothing but budget line. It, it will be considered as a budget line. So you have three different curves. Can you see IC3? IC2, 
is 1, just like this. You have 3 indifference curve. So now you have got to know exactly the, both the diagrams are simultaneously practiced, analyzed in one particular diagram. So IC3, IC2, IC1. With that you have budget line, your price line also. Budget line is also considered as price line. So in this diagram, you have to tell in which one you are going to get the highest satisfaction. So in your textbook, these are not named. But for the easy analyzing, I have named it IC3, IC2, IC1. So let's talk about IC3 now. In IC3, the indifference curve says higher the indifference curve gives the higher the indifference. So higher the satisfaction. So according to the indifference curve, IC3 will give you the highest satisfaction. Is it so? Yes, it is true. So according to the indifference curve, the indifference mark, IC3 gives you the highest satisfaction. But you have to understand one thing here. Your budget line is AB. Your budget line is AB. That means your price line is AB. Your income is limited to AB. So now IC3 is in this point. If IC3 in this point, the budget line is this side. So that means you have to move towards the right side. If you are moving towards the right side, only then you can achieve IC3. Don't you think your, when your income is AB, reaching there, it is not possible? You cannot afford, even though you know that according to indifference mark, it says that you will get maximum satisfaction in IC3. But you have to understand one thing, even though you get highest satisfaction in this, but your income is not that much. The income is lesser than the IC3. You cannot afford goods to get IC3 satisfaction. So your income level is IC3, so sorry, AB, which is lesser than the IC3. Your income level is here. So that's why IC3, even though it gives you the maximum satisfaction according to indifference map, you cannot reach there because your income is lesser than the IC3. That means you cannot afford IC3. You cannot afford the IC3. That is what I am trying to say. IC3 gives you the highest satisfaction according to indifference curve. Yes. But IC3 will be the IC3 with the budget set cannot reach. The second one now. So IC3 is possible now in this one to get the maximum satisfaction. No, it is not possible. What about then IC1? Is it possible? IC1 is it possible? Let's see now. The IC3 curve, can you see here? And take this as a point. At this point, is it possible? Do you think a consumer will get maximum satisfaction in it? Yes, the possibility is there that you can buy the good according to IC1. You can afford it. This line you cannot afford. But this you can afford. But what is happening here? Your income is more than the IC1. Your income is more than the IC1. See, can you see the right side? Your income is this. You are purchasing goods here. That means your income is greater than the IC1. Your income is more than the IC1. That means you are, un you are underspending your money. The income what you have, you are going to do a underspending. You have 40 rupees, you are spending only 30 rupees. That is the possibility here. You have 40 rupees of income, you are spending only 30 rupees. So that means your satisfaction is also going to come down. So if you are spending 40 rupees, when you have 40 rupees, if you are spending 40 rupees, the satisfaction is going to increase. But if you have 40 rupees, in that if you are spending 30 rupees, your satisfaction level is going to come down. Definitely it will be less. So even though in this point, I see one, it is below the income level. You can afford this, but you are going to do underspending. If you are going to do underspending, that means your satisfaction level is also going to decrease. So as you know, according to the indifference map, IC1 gives you the lowest satisfaction. So definitely being a consumer, you don't want to reach that. So now, do you want to go with IC1? No. Now, is it IC2 where you are going to uh, select in these three? You're going to, are you going to pick IC2? Yes. I'll tell you why. Because your income level, if it is AB, an indifference curve, any indifference curve which is tangent to AB, 
can you see this is the ab curve and ic2 is exactly tangent to the ab curve that means you are income and you are spending a satisfaction everything is equal here if you have 40 rupees you are spending 40 rupees you are buying goods sorry you are buying goods uh, of 40 rupees so then you will be getting the maximum satisfaction in it so yes definitely i see two the simple reason why it is because the budget line the budget line is ab the budget line is tangent to the uh, indifference curve so where budget line ic curve uh, tangent to the consumer will get the maximum satisfaction you cannot reach ic3 even though it says because you cannot afford this your income is less than that ic1 is not possible because you will be doing underspending if you are doing underspending your satisfaction will be less ic2 is it possible yes it is possible because your income which is a budget line and you, the money what you are spending and the satisfaction levels both are tangent to each other can you see in x1 x2 which is you have a star mark so that is exactly tangent to the budget line in difference curve and the budget line when the both are tangent to each other tangent means this will be called as intersection it is intersecting each other so this is the budget line and this will be the curve so that means this is a budget line and the indifference curve is tangent that means touching and going back this will be called as a tangent this is happening with the ic2 so that's why ic2 is the indifference curve where a consumer is going to choose to get maximum satisfaction so why we are talking about this so even though you sometimes you feel like you will get highest satisfaction in a different different things but you have to see your income level also in the limited income you have to try to reach maximum satisfaction that is what optimal choice of the consumer it is trying to say whatever income you have in that income try to get the maximum satisfaction not exceeding your income not lesser than income if you go with the both the extremes so it is not going to work for a consumer if you want to spend more than your income you have to borrow money which is really very riskier if you are spending lesser than your income your satisfaction will be less so what is the best possible thing which is the bestest curve for you the bestest curve for you picking the ic2 where your indifference curve at this sorry your, your budget set your budget line and the indifference curve both are tangent that time you are spending all your money at the same time you are trying to get the higher satisfaction in the limited income that is what is called as optimal choice of the consumer so i hope you understood this concept so next class i will be coming with few of the couple of demand topics thank you so much